Okay. Okay, maybe we're going now. <laughs> I'm Helen, and uh, we're going to show some critters that live or hang around the harbor. Uh, Statter Harbor is a great place for watching birds because they're nice and close. Uh, many of the seabirds tend to be way out in the water and you don't get a good look at them. So the harbor is a busy place that has uh, houseboats, fishing boats, sailboats, kayaks, you name it, coming and going. Um, and so, and the birds seem to get used to it and uh, allow you to get relatively close to them. Okay, so we're gonna show mostly birds, but there were a few other critters at the harbor that I find interesting, uh, the moon jellyfish. This thing has no heart, no brain, and no blood. It's 95% water and um, eats plankton, but it's just gorgeous and it kind of pulsates in the water. Um, so it's fun to watch. Uh, it's eaten by birds, fish, and sea turtles. It eats plankton and supposedly it has uh, stinging cells that are not uh, detrimental to humans, but I didn't give it a try. Another animal we see um, at the harbor on occasion when the fishing is good for them is the stellar sea lion, which you can tell because it has an external ear. Um, the day I saw these and took these pictures, they were in a big mob. <laughs> They're just really close together. And I don't know how they even managed to swim. Um, you'll just all of a sudden be walking along and you'll hear a big whoosh and they all come up and take a breath. Uh, there's, like I said, they're just packed together and then they dive down and they disappear again. You don't see them. Uh, they're predatory and they, it says they feed mostly at night and they eat over a hundred different species of fish. Mm -hmm. This really wasn't taken at the harbor, but, um, and I don't particularly like to, uh, you know, the idea of animals in captivity, but this is one that could not be released um, into the wild. It's in Florida. But it was interesting to just see how smart they are and how they can react to different things. Uh, the trainer would use very subtle hand movements to get this animal to do all kinds of amazing things. And one of them was to smile. So this is supposedly a sea lion smiling. There are also dockside whales. Now I've never seen the water whales. I've been told that they are there, but this is the only one I've seen there. This is also another rare critter I've only seen once, the snow dragon. And a more common one, the harbor seals. Uh, we see them almost, almost every day you go there, you will see a harbor seal. They are curious, they look at you, and then often you pull up your camera and they disappear. Uh, they have no external ear. Um, they're amazing divers. They can go up to 500, down to 500 feet and they've even been recorded at 1400 feet. They can hold their breath for an hour and a half and they store their oxygen in their blood. They also said that they sleep in a standing position, which is rather interesting. They also uh, take advantage of any fish that might show up. Um, this happened when the fishermen were flaying fish for customers and they would throw the carcasses over the side and the sea lions were quick to jump on them and grab a bite, sometimes rather uh, actively. After they had eaten and there were no more fish being thrown in the water, they just laid on the water. I'd never seen them do this before. They were just floating around on their backs like, like they were at a spa or something, uh, very relaxed. This one looks like he's smiling and he looks very comfortable to me. <laughs> And I did say we were gonna have birds. So moving on to birds. First are the glaucus winged seagulls. Uh, they are very common at the harbor. Um, most of them stay here year round. They say that a few of them do migrate. They have a thick bill, pink legs. And it takes them about four years to mature. So you see a lot of them in different stages of brown feathers turning to the white with the gray back. Now these are also uh, they forage by walking, swimming, and sometimes they even plunge from the air from flight into the water to catch a fish. They're omnivores. They eat fish, mussels, 
Uh, they also will uh, forage at the garbage dump and they eat carrion and they even eat starfish. Um, this wasn't a great picture, but it's the only time I've ever caught one with a starfish. Another gull is the Bonapartes. Its name honors the French zoologist, Charles Bonaparte. He's a distant cousin of Napoleon. These are small gulls, um, sort of more like, more tern-like, and they seldom forage in garbage dumps. They also nest in trees rather than in, um, on the ground as most gulls do. So that first one was a non-breeding or an immature, and this is a mature uh, Bonaparte skull. This little guy is kind of a stocky little uh, black and white bird, uh, frequently seen. They also um, dive for their food. Um, says that they uh, forage less than 100 feet down and their diet depends on where they're at and what season it is, but they eat fish and crustaceans as well. Uh, little is known about them. They're kind of a mystery. So if you're doing research, this might be a bird to think about. Uh, they say very few of their nests have been found, so they don't have much documentation on their breeding. But they are cute little birds and they disappear very quickly. This one was doing something I've only seen a couple of times. Um, it was going along the surface of the water with its legs kicking in the back, kind of like a little motorboat splashing water up in the back. It would have been a cute video, but it was just, I, I don't know what it was trying to run away from other birds. I didn't see any others, but <laughs> whatever it was doing, it was uh, cute to watch him. Another bird we see frequently are the common mergansers. Um, they are distinguished by their long, narrow, serrated bill. They eat mostly fish and they also are diving birds. They swim underwater. They can swallow a fish up to a foot long. It says that they're, in, they're young, eat mostly insects. And they have what's called a creche. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that right. Those, those of you that are French speaking, it's spelled C-R-E-C-H-E-S. It means like nursery or daycare. And it appears that many females will dump all their babies off on another female. So one female will end up taking care of uh, many ducklings. They um, said so they've even seen them with up to 70 uh, ducklings following behind them. I've only seen up to 15 um, out at the glacier on, at times. The scientists say they don't have a clear image of or knowledge of why that would be advantageous to have all the babies, you know, from two or three different females um, grouped together with one in kind of a nursery-like situation. So if you have any ideas on why that would be advantageous, might be interesting. Uh, when they're immature, both males and females have the red heads. So it takes them a couple of years to mature. So this shows a male uh, losing those red feathers and getting the black feathers of the adult male and also the gray feathers turning to white. And it's uh, another, uh, it's a good picture of, you can see the long thin bill. This is another merganser, the red breasted merganser. I have not seen very many of them and uh, don't have any great, great pictures of them, but um, they're pretty little birds that also have the narrow serrated bill of mergansers. Their diet's mostly fish. It says they can eat 15 to 20 fish a day and they can dive 250 to 300 times in one day. The oldest one recorded was nine years old. So I only have a couple of pictures of them. And my last merganser, the hooded merganser, uh, this is a female hooded merganser. She was swimming around with the golden eyes. Looks very similar when they were all in a big group. Uh, when you see just the two of them, you can uh, distinguish kind of their silhouette is different and the head shape is a bit different. Uh, these are only found in North America and that uh, fan-like crest on their head is actually collapsible. These are also diving fish and they eat fish and any other aquatic animals says they can be submerged for two minutes, but they resurface to swallow their prey. 
and these nest in tree cavities. Uh, the hooded merganser has an interesting thing. They, the female takes care, does all the laying the eggs and taking care of the young, but she also practices what's called brood parasitism, where she will lay her eggs in the nests of other females, but only other female hooded mergansers. They said they have found nests with up to 44 eggs. The average is 13. And the oldest uh, hooded merganser found was a banded bird shot by a hunter that was 14 years old. Um, this is a female merganser and like many of these uh, birds that you're seeing, they have to run on the water in order to take off. And I've not seen a male uh, hooded merganser on, at the harbor, but I did see one at Kingfisher Pond and I just put in the picture because he is so striking. This is a common bird at the harbor. We see them frequently and if you don't see them, you hear them when they take off. They always make a chattering sort of noise. Uh, they take advantage of boats, any apparatus on the boats or they sit on um, structures at the harbor. Uh, this is the female. You can see she has kind of more of the rusty colored band across her chest. Might be an immature female. And here's a nice male. Uh, they hover and then dive down to get uh, to catch fish. It says undigestible parts, they will uh, cough up as pellets. Now I've put in quite a few pictures of the bald eagle because there are a number of them out there and they are common. You can see all kinds of different eagle behaviors there. So I find them, it's an interesting place to observe eagles. Uh, they of course like the tallest mast. Uh, the other day when Brenda and I were there, I think we saw four of them sitting on different uh, ship masts. Sometimes another one will come along and decide that it's his turn to his or her turn to uh, have the mast. Uh, once in a while we get a sunny day and you can really see the, <laughs> the nice brown colors. On this day, there were, I was out at the end of the breakwater and there were probably five or six mature eagles. And I think the updrafts must have been just perfect. They were just slowly soaring and making big circles. They're very vocal. Uh, they may sing in singly or in pairs, harmonizing. If you don't see one on a boat or uh, some structure at the harbor, uh, look around the trees. You're bound to find one or two in the trees surrounding the harbor. Uh, this is the only one I've ever seen drooling. I'm not sure what, what that's all about. Eagles are very adept at catching fish. Um, this one caught it with just one foot. Um, they can just swoop down on the water and catch them. Uh, people worry about their dogs and cats being taken, but uh, eagles weigh eight to 12 pounds. Females usually are larger and they can actually only carry three to four pounds. Maybe if they come in on a swift um, swoop, they might be able to carry something up to five or six pounds, but that's, that would be a lot. It's all based on aerodynamics. So don't worry about your cats and dogs. However, they can hop and drag carrying even bigger fish. Uh, this was at the harbor one day, uh, fishermen were cleaning fish. So this is a filleted fish. You can kind of see the side there that's been filleted. And this eagle is dragging it up onto the rocks. Um, on this particular day, there were about 10 eagles on the rocks. And they had uh, three or four fish that they had drug up on the beach. And they kind of stand around and watch one eat and then they'll intimidate or uh, bully or something and take over and, and uh, eat the fish themselves. So it's kind of fun to just watch all the bickering and changing around that they do. Uh, for those of you not familiar with eagles, um, this is an immature, it takes eagles four years to mature. Young eagles have, uh, like when they first fledge, they have brown eyes and black beaks. So this is somewhere on his way to being mature. 
a mature eagle has, of course, the white head and white tail and brown feathers. Their eyes are the silvery color and their bill is totally yellow. Another behavior that's uh, observable at the harbor from the, um, from the float over by the, uh, where the troopers parked their ship, their boat, uh, these eagles were making a nest. I watched them make their nest. I believe Yost even saw them, um, saw one fledge. So I believe they, they successfully uh, were able to raise at least one eagle. Eagles are very aggressive and defensive of their nest and their young. Uh, one is always either on the nest or very close and the other one is either foraging or also very close to the nest. And it appears to me that their main enemy is other eagles. Um, they don't have many other predators. Just a couple of weeks ago when it was snowing, these two eagles were like two pendulums. They would swing way out and then they would come close together in uh, this kind of graceful movement. Uh, it was not an aggressive thing. It seemed to be a companionable sort of uh, dance in the air. And then one landed on a, this um, post and the next one landed close by. This is just below D hearts. And then they began to sing in the rain. I'm not, what, did I say rain? Snow, <laughs> sorry about that. The horned grebe is an interesting bird. Um, it also dives and forages for for food, they eat the same things, the fish, crustaceans, insects, you know, just about whatever they can find. Interesting thing about the horned grebe is that it also eats its own feathers that it plucks from its flank area. Uh, these are small kind of downy feathers. It, uh, the adults eat them and they feed them to their babies. This supposedly makes a plug, excuse me, between their stomach and their intestine that acts as a strainer keeping the bones in the stomach longer so that maybe they can digest more effectively. Eventually they eject these as a pellet and that is possibly a way to um, remove parasites from the upper digestive system. And we also have the red-necked grebes. They also eat their feathers and they um, have complex courtship displays with loud calls and they can raise a crest on their head. Of course, now notice we're also seeing all of these birds in their winter plumage. So we're not seeing the bright colors and patterns that we would normally see during a breeding season. Another bird is that we see frequently, the barrel's golden eye. Uh, you can tell the barrel's golden eye by the um, crescent on his face. And they form their pairs. This is a male and a female. Uh, this is a probably a juvenile female, uh, female. I thought it looked like a defiant teenager. As I was saying, they form their pairs in the winter. And it says that males will sometimes several males will get together and they will court one female on a communal display on the water. So I'm not sure that that's what was going on here, but uh, it was interesting and fun to watch. There's also the common golden eye. It has a circle on its face rather than a crescent. Um, and the literature says it's more common. So in some areas, perhaps it is, but uh, I primarily see the barrels golden eye with a few of the common ones thrown in. These uh, form in flocks, sometimes large concentrations. And it's kind of fun to watch. You see a big flock of them and then they all dive at one time and just disappear. This is an American coot. It's been hanging out. Uh, I've been watching it now for a month or so probably. Uh, it's been hanging out at the harbor with female golden eyes. And it, um, coots are related to rails. They're kind of different. They're actually, they, they prefer plants, but I'm sure here in the harbor, there are a few plants, so it, but they also eat fish. So maybe this one is one that likes fish better than plants, who knows? 
Uh, they don't have webbed feet. They have rather strong legs and big feet with lobes on their toes to, I guess, help them paddle in the water. Now the loons, um, I don't see them every year at the harbor. Um, my last pictures of loons were in 2018. So uh, it's been a while since I've seen them out there, but you know, it's also a timing thing. This particular loon, I'm not sure what to call it. It's one of the, there were only a couple of them that had the brown all the way around the neck. Uh, so I don't know whether it's an Arctic, if you know what it is, um, put a note in the chat chat box so we can identify it. Uh, most of them I've seen have more of the white necks and most of them have that little ring around the neck. So they're, I call them, calling them Pacific loons. Uh, reading about them, the <clears throat> winter plumage can be everything from um, spots as they change from, they have a very elaborate uh, breeding plumage, but then the winter they're rather plain. Uh, here you can see the, as it's changing, it has two kind of dots on its back. This one has almost an all black back. And then this one has kind of like this, there's a almost scale like. Um, they're frequently seen with their heads dipping in the water looking for prey and then they will uh, dive after that prey. They, um, I also, which I don't have a good picture of, they have a rather long neck. I've seen them put their, stretch their neck on their back almost like a swan does and uh, to preen their feathers. Pacific loons are also very aggressive when it comes to defending their territory in their nest. They both incubate the eggs and um, they may mate for life, although that's not for sure. So we're getting ready to dive, taking the dip. I'm assuming they're finding a lot of food. We have seen up to nine in a group. So there are at least nine of them out there. I don't know, there may be more because they just, they pop up in all different areas. So it's really hard to uh, get a good count. Uh, the American crow, I'm sure you're all familiar with this. Um, humans have various times tried to exterminate crows. Of course, they've not been very successful as crows remain very abundant. Uh, they're very adaptable and opt opportunistic feeders. Uh, in the harbor, they are often seen eating mussels, which they can hold in their foot and pry open with their bills. I've also seen them fly overhead and drop the mussel shells to break them. Uh, the gulls do the same thing. Uh, sometimes the harbor freezes over and in those cracks, um, this year, there, this particular year, there were mussel shells, which the crow took advantage of um, as an easy meal. And occasionally you see a black-billed magpie uh, these are also smart birds that the farmers tried to exterminate and of course weren't very successful with that either. They mostly forage by walking around and uh, flipping things over looking for food. They're omnivores. They eat everything from insects and rodents and carrion to berries, seeds, and nuts. This one looks like it was eating, I'm assuming this is a a seagull by the white feathers, but not sure. And then the other day we saw uh, three mallards. Um, these are pretty far away. So I put in a couple of better pictures of female mallards. And of course, this is a common bird seen mostly around the world. They forage by sticking their head in the water. They are not diving birds, uh, but they will uh, turn upside down, you'll see just their rear ends sticking up as they forage for plants. This one seems to be posing. The trumpeter swan was a rare bird uh, to be in the uh, harbor. 
They particularly like shallow, large ponds with a lot of vegetation because they feed much as the um, mallards do by upending and uh, reaching down to the bottom to get plant material. And there's not much plant material in the harbor. Uh, this particular swan is an immature, you can see by the gray feathers. It was first seen over across the road in at Auk Lake, but then when the lake froze, it found its way over to the harbor. Uh, eventually it was um, caught by animal rescue. And I'm not sure whether it was injured or starving, but it did not survive. So that was kind of a sad ending to the poor swan. Other birds that are pretty, even in the winter, this one has a distinctive um, coloration pattern. The long-tailed duck is mostly a duck in cold northern waters. And it's one of, it's often says it's the most abundant bird in the high Arctic. It forms large flocks out in, out in the sea and it's very vocal. Um, I like it because its name is appropriate. It has a long tail. Uh, for some of you, uh, you may remember this bird was called an old squaw. These are two female uh, long tail ducks taking off. And a pair. If you look up the, this long tailed duck, the, his breeding plumage is even, uh, it's different and, but just as striking. The pigeon guillemots, um, I had, have only seen them this one time in the harbor. I usually see them further out when you're like on the ferry or on a boat, um, more away from shore. And they're just a black bird with two white wing spots. Um, what's different about them, they are also diving birds, they, but they propel themselves with their wings. Whereas most of those, the other birds we've seen prior to this one uh, propel themselves with their feet. These birds are good divers. They can dive up to 150 feet, but they probably eat in the upper uh, 60 feet of water. And while they propel themselves with their wings, they use their feet for steering. This is kind of what you mostly see is just kind of a black silhouette bird, but you see the two white spots and you go, oh, I know what that is. And my last bird is the Arctic Tern. It um, is our long distance champion. It's said that some of them may actually fly from the Arctic to the Antarctic in their migration. Uh, they've been seen on, in every ocean and on every continent. They spend most of their time out at sea and their diet varies with the season and their habitat, but it's mostly small fish. They nest in colonies. Uh, they have an aerial courtship in which the male may fly over with a fish and feed it to the female on the ground. These birds are excellent flyers, of course, to fly those long distances. Uh, while they were there at the harbor, they were on the breakwater. And this one, you can see their short stubby legs. They are not designed for walking and um, foraging by on foot. And you can also notice their long wing feathers and tail feathers. They were also very vocal while they were out there. And they were stocking up, catching a lot of little fish. You can see on this one, you can't even see those little tiny feet. So it makes them very streamlined for all that uh, flying that they do. They're also very aggressive to defend their nest. And uh, any of you have been anyways near a nesting site, um, you were probably had them dive at you. They even strike you on the head if they get close enough or they worried enough. So they do their best to chase off everything from eagles to ravens to dogs to people, whatever happens to threaten their nest. Well, that's my last bird. Um, I appreciate all of you coming. Looks like I went through these pretty quickly. <laughs> um, if you have any questions, you can put them in the 
the chat room and maybe we can um, answer them. Maybe you can identify that loon for me. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, if you go out to the harbor right now, you're going to see snow on the boats and um, on the floats, but the birds are still there. So if you live in Juneau, check it out. So that's it, Brenda. Um, thank you, Helen. Thank you. Uh, and let's, uh, let's go ahead and get some questions. If you want to have a question, go ahead and unmute yourself and uh, we'll see what we can talk about. See. Okay. Helen, this, this is Marsha. I just want to make a few comments regarding the photos that you have are stunning. Um, the, the picture of the eagles in the snow, I just, I just love it. It just, uh, you know, getting out in wintertime and looking at birds can be a challenge, but when you see something like that, you really, I don't know, you just made me want to go out and see birds.